I know we are here to honor and recognize our CAP award recipients, but it would be remiss of us not to acknowledge and give remembrance to the 2,977 first responders and citizens who lost their lives 23 years ago today in the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Let's please take a moment of silence. Citizens Appreciate Police, also known as CAP, honors officers of the Denver Police Department who provide service to their community above and beyond the call of duty. Formed in 1978 by Mayor Bill McNichols and District Attorney Dale Tooley, CAP is a nonprofit organization whose intention is to promote awareness within the community of the dedication displayed regularly by members of the Denver Police Department. The mission of the CAP Board is to seek out and publicly acknowledge these deserving officers. The CAP Award consists of a plaque and a pin. This pin is the only civilian awarded pin allowed to be worn on a Denver police officer's uniform. Presentations of these awards take place four times a year. To date, more than 550 members of the Denver Police Department have received the CAP Award. Um, and we'll have our first um, uh, board member come up and present the award, Linda Tafoya, which is I would like to call forward um, Officer Rodolfo Gonzalez, Officer Jana or Tony Anthony, Officer Jonathan Green, and Officer Harrison Sanchez Patrickwin. It is indeed an honor um, to give the presentation for the CAP Award to the four of you. Uh, Lieutenant Galloway probably said it best when he said that these officers definitely did something very special and outside of the realm of their normal duties. On the fly, they pulled together a team that had to do a balancing act between Denver Public Schools, Denver Human Services, officers from another district, and an unhappy parent, all the while making certain that the welfare and comfort of a child was their top priority. And now, for those of you who are old enough to remember Paul Harvey, <laughs> here's the rest of the story. On February 26th of this year, Officer District 6 Gonzalez was dispatched to an elementary school on the report of a possible child neglect because the mother had failed to pick up her daughter from school. In coordinating a plan to find the mother and resolve the issue, Officer Gonzalez felt that it would be appropriate to have some additional resources and so Officers Green and Sanchez Patrickwin were called to the scene to assist. All calls made to try to reach the mother were unsuccessful. Because her home was in another district, they had to reach out to officers in that district to go do the welfare check. No sign of the mother. Officer Gonzalez then contacted Denver Human Services and got the names and phone numbers of the child's closest relatives. He was able to reach the paternal grandmother and as a result of that call, the father of the child reached out to him and agreed to come down to the school to pick up his daughter. When DHS was told of this plan, they said, sorry, no go, the child cannot be released to the father. Um, and they were going to take, put the child in their custody. So now the officers are dealing with an unhappy father, a missing mother, and uh, Denver Human Services saying that they're going to come and get the little girl. So the officers were able to convince Denver Human Services to let them take the child in the interim to District 6. So while Officer Gonzalez was sneaking the little girl out the back door, Officers Green and Sanchez Patrickwin um, actually did an extraordinary job of kind of de-escalating, explaining everything to the father and calming him down. I have to add this little footnote, which is Officer um, Gonzalez actually had to call and have another car delivered to transport the little girl because his car did not have a car seat. So once they were at the station, in comes da 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 the rest of the cavalry, Officer Anthony, and she agreed to sit with the little girl, put her in a comfy chair, 
they watched cartoons and Officer Anthony made sure that she felt comfortable and safe and like a part of the family. I would also add that Officers Green and Sanchez Patrickin then um, bought a Happy Meal to help make sure the girl was happy. <laughs> so when, um, when DHS representative finally showed up at the district um, to get the little girl, Officer Gonzalez once again started emphasizing with the representative that he really felt that the little girl would be safe being with the father. She had been telling everybody that she was frequently with her dad, and he really felt as though it would be safe for her to go home with the father. This representative actually listened. And so he talked at length with the little girl and agreed that their records with regard to the father were out of date and the little girl got to go home with her dad. This six hour event um, had a happy ending for all, but most especially for the child who, thanks to the special care that these officers gave, was never distraught and she really seemed to enjoy her time with the officers. Thank you, Officers Gonzalez, Anthony Green, and Sanchez Patrickin for being so thorough, thoughtful, and attentive beyond your call of duty. Do you all have anything you want to add or did I screw it up? <laughs> okay, then the presentation of awards. Christy, can you help with that? Officer Anthony. <laughs> Officer Gonzalez. Good morning, everyone. If Corporal Sarah Kirchel and Officer Nora Cardoza could come up, please. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so excited and honored today to present the CAP Award to these two amazing women. The story on its face is that on January 22, 2024, District 6, again, Corporal Sarah Kirchel and Officer Nora Cardoza responded to an elementary school in central Denver on a report of an eight-year-old child who had not been picked up by her mother. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> While on scene, the officers learned that the child's sibling also spent some time waiting to be picked up from a daycare facility until an approved guardian arrived. Upon some investigation, it was learned that this child's mother does not have access to a vehicle, and she and her children are currently staying at a local homeless shelter. After uniting the family, the officers provided courtesy transport back to the shelter but not before treating them to a warm dinner at a nearby restaurant franchise, McDonald's. Happy Meal. Happy Meal. Well, they're called Happy Meals for a reason, I guess, huh? I say that this is the face of this story because in speaking with these two amazing women, there is so much more to this. Um, this is a story about moms. This is a story about community. It's a story of working together and um, 
having a positive impact and a lasting positive impact on kids and families that we serve. Um, I spoke with both of these women um, at length and wanted to get their takes on their experience. Um, so that day, Officer Cardoza was training with Corporal Kirchall and um, they got the call around 7 p.m. at this elementary school. So this child, this girl who was eight years old, had been not only at aftercare, but it, had, it was now getting dark out, or was dark, I guess, this time of year. Um, and so she had been there already for several hours, several attempts to contact the mom. Um, so officers were asked to respond. A member of the school had stayed with the girl and so I don't know who that person is, but obviously she should be commended as well. And again, this is kind of an example of the community working together. Um, when the two officers showed up, um, Officer or Corporal Kirchell actually was able to use her education and background to really do a, a wonderful assessment. Um, and she really looked into what was going on, um, the facts, and was able to use her experience as a child development expert, um, child abuse and neglect, to really assess the situation. And what she learned was, um, well, first she observed that the eight-year-old, she was dressed well, um, her hair was nicely done, she looked very well cared for. So she kind of right away determined this may not be some kind of neglect situation. Um, and so mom eventually showed up um, and again, Corporal Kershaw found out that she had a bad day. Um, she's homeless, she had come to Colorado from another state and had been raising her two kids by herself. Um, she had been contacted by a friend earlier who was suicidal and she was helping him and she was very frank and open and just said, I messed up, I had a bad day. So Corporal Kershaw at that point had to kind of balance between what do I do, you know, in a, in a humane way, and is this child safe, and also is the younger sibling safe, and where is that younger sibling? And so again, um, she found out that the other child was safe. Um, these kids did not have any signs of abuse or neglect, and this is something that I think we tend to overlook, but when you respond to a scene, it's one thing to just do the call and leave. But these two actually took the time and used their not only experience, but their motherhood um, to really understand what was going on and save the day. So they made the child feel comfortable. And um, the takeaway from both of them was that this kid, you know, someday will feel comfortable contacting the police if she ever needs to reach out, and so will the mom. Um, they left there saying that they had formed a great bond with, with mom and with both kids. Um, and what was more amazing is that there were other women from the homeless shelter also with kids who showed up in support of this woman. Um, and their kids too looked like they were doing really well. So I think this was truly a situation of three women with, with children who were all supporting each other um, and then two other women with children who stepped in too and understood kind of that we all have bad days as parents once in a while. Um, and so starting with <clears throat> Officer Cardoza, she said that Corporal Kirchall has been amazing to work with. Um, she's been kind of like a mentor to her and that that day this was their first call and this, that she hasn't had an experience like this before. Um, it affected her as a mom herself. Um, are your kids here? Can you guys raise your hand? Hi guys. Your mom's a hero. <laughs> um, and that day she learned compassion and understanding and um, she hopes that she made a difference and so that this family feels more comfortable when they're dealing with police. She was a 22 badge and so to exercise this amount of discretion, humanity, and also caution, um, she should be, you should be commended for that, so thank you. 
Um, and in speaking with Corporal Kirchall, um, she is also a mother to a 16-year-old. We're, we're taping this right now so that he can be here. He's working on a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> and as a good mom, he went to school today, and <laughs> he's, he's in high school, so. He's a good kid. Is he? <laughs> Um, so again, she has experience dealing with, with kids in this situation, not only based on her education, but also as a mom um, who has, in her words, given everything for her son. Um, she said actually that this is the reason why she gets to do what she does every day. She said that her son lends, gives her permission to be a police officer and that every day, he lends her to the community so that she can help other people. I think that all of us probably in this room can relate to that. You all sacrifice every day and your family makes sacrifices so that you can be a public servant. And so everyone in this room, especially these two amazing women, should be commended for that. And so should your families. So thank you families as well. It is my honor at this time to present the Citizens Appreciate Police Award to these two amazing women, Corporal Kirchell and Officer Cardoza. All right, can I ask technician Mike Borquez to come up front, please? Um, so a lot of times uh, we don't always hear about these stories and we hear about them after the fact and sometime down the road, but this Christmas I might have got a phone call asking about a rather large sized pair of shoes, which then led to a further conversation, which then led to the discovery of what we're about to share with you. So shortly before school let out in summer of May of 2023, Technician Borges visited a DPS school with DPD's Comfort Canine Shelby and her handler Technician Gillian. During this visit, Technician Borges noticed a young male student in the hallway who appeared to be in distress. Given Technician Borges's natural caring instinct, he approached the student and struck up a conversation. After speaking with the student for a while, Technician Borges was able to learn that this student was experiencing some problem with another student, and before leaving, he let the student know that he would speak to the school staff about this, and he did just that. A few months later, during summer break, Technician Borges was at a local community pool with his two children. Coincidentally, Technician Borges the, noticed the young male student that he had met previous before school got up in uh, May. Uh, Technician Borges struck up a conversation and introduced the student to his children. During the conversation, Waterworld, the topic of Waterworld came up, and Technician Borges learned that this young student has never been to Waterworld. So, what does Technician Borges do? He invites the young student to go to Waterworld with his kids um, and asks the student for his mom's phone number so that he can contact her and see if they can arrange, arrange this trip. So the outing was planned, the day came, Technician Borges picked up the young student, they get to Waterworld, and one of those big black clouds rolled in, and as they were walking up, the gates got closed to Waterworld, and the park was closed. So, <laughs> understanding we live in Colorado, Technician Borges decided lunch, and then a redirect, a pivot, and went back to the same pool they met at, um, had a great afternoon of fun, um, and a great time. So. Well, they never got to Waterworld, <laughs> they did have a really good time. So some time passed, 
and Technician Borges returned to the student's school. Um, it was uh, the week before Thanksgiving, and Technician Borges was going to help serve lunch for the Thanksgiving meal for the students at the school. Um, before he headed to the cafeteria to do this, uh, Technician Borges um, asked the school staff if he could speak with the student briefly, just say hello and see how things were going. Um, Technician Borges and the student spoke for several minutes, and during this time, Technician Borges learned that the student's football team had made the national championship, made it to the national championship tournament in another state. However, due to the family experiencing financial hardships, the student was not able to attend the tournament with his teammates. Technician Borges let the student know he would reach out to his mom and see if there was anything he could do to help. He also noted the growing student might be needing some new clothes. Technician Borges reached out to the student's mom and inquired about the funding needed to get her son to the national football tournament. The student's mom was unsure about the amount and the details, so she gave Technician Borges the coach's uh, phone number, and he reached out to the coach. Technician Borges was able to learn that the student needed $300 to attend the tournament, and Technician Borges, wanting to see this talented young man make it to the national championship game, let the coach know he would like to give the $300 to the, to the student to go to the tournament. The coach agreed, and Technician Borges met the coach here at the district station and um, gave him the funds. A few weeks went by, and Technician Borges reached out to the student's mom to follow up and find out how the tournament went. The student's mom was so excited to share that the student's team had won the national championship. And Technician Borges was e equally excited to hear this as well. Now realizing it was now Christmas time, um, so a few weeks after Thanksgiving, now we're getting closer to Christmas. Um, Technician Borges thought that the, the student might be needing some new clothes, and so he reached out to the student's mom to touch base and see if there was anything that they needed. Um, at first, um, the, mom, um, the student, um, it was shared the student could use um, some new items, but it was also shared. The mom said she didn't need anything. However, we learned that, that um, uh, the technician Borg has learned that she did. And so um, he then reached out to um, uh, at then Councilwoman Kendra Black to see if there was anyone in the community uh, who had reached out to him to see if there was anyone in the community in need of assistance over the holidays. So he reached out to her, let her know about this family, and together the two purchased new clothes and shoes for the student and gifts for the mom and made sure to deliver everything before Christmas. So with that, um, we have a couple people who um, hopefully would like to come up and say hello today. So Dee, would you like to come up? My name is Lamar Johnson, Officer Mike. Obviously, he um, he stick by my side for like since I left middle school, <laughs> since sixth grade all the way to high school. I'm in ninth grade now. My Officer Mike came to me one day. He seen me stressing the hallway. Made a conversation with me. It, it got bigger and bigger and bigger until he got my mom's phone number. And then um, Thanksgiving was coming up. He came, knocked on my door, and asked, "Do you need some food?" I don't know. He just he put it right in front of me. I grabbed it, put it in the house. My mom came to the door. <laughs> now it's Christmas time coming up. Um, he called my mom one day. I didn't know where I was sleeping. I heard knocking on the door, and guess who? I, guess who it was? It was Officer Mike at the door. He had a present and a other present. <laughs> one for me and one for my mom. Gave, I gave her the present one day. We ain't really have no food at the house, so he really, he came and gave me two gift cards for food for I could spend it on for my family. And that really, I, that, that made me happy because I was going through a little stuff at that time with my dad. And then for my football tournament, uh, my, me and my mom was stressing about me going, this and that. One day, my mama, I come home from school, See y'all yelling and stuff about I was like, what are you yelling for? <laughs> and then I go in her room, she was like, Lay, you won't believe what just happened. I was like, what? And she was like, Mike paid for your trip. I was just, 
I was so happy because I didn't know if I was going to go and support my team mm -hmm. and go win that. I didn't know that. Previously, we went down there, we lost it. Yeah. None, none too serious. It was the second national. So country. then we went down there again. And they got it. I told my, I told Mike Pacifico, I said, I'm gonna win this one for you. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, it just happens like that, and I, I was appreciated for that. Like, I know how to show my, I know how to show out for Mike because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be a three star. And basically, I'm ranking the city for football. So, if it if it wasn't for Mike, I wouldn't have been nothing right now. So and I want to thank for, I want to thank him for giving me that opportunity to show out and go do what I got to do on that field. Is that right? Hi, I just want to step in and say you hear about these things all the time, but you know. Given the relationship with police, you know, during these times, I wanted to come and show my appreciation and show and people to see that there are people who appreciate you guys. Also, during this time, it, it was never stated that I was fighting addiction at that time. I was going through addiction and and was just really going through it, just really feeling at the end of my ropes. and. Mike made me feel so comfortable within that time and in that space that I told Mike that I was dealing with addiction. And Mike called people in, got me back in mental health, got me back in um, certain things that got me back on track to where I am right now, sober, clean, you know, trying to get my life together, back on my meds, back, in my, back into therapy. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of things that led up to me being sober, clean, and healthy now. And um, just, do you know how it feels to be addicted and not to have anything for your kid and then be able to act like you've come with all this stuff and that you've done something when you've been doing nothing? You know what I mean? So uh, Mike has been an anchor in our lives and I want that to not be understated. He's been an anchor in our lives when we're hungry when we're thirsty, when we need a ride. Mike never judged me. I never felt judged after I told him I was an addict. He still gave me like $50 that day, $80 that day. Anybody else would have been like, I'm not giving her a dime. You know what I mean? But the point is, he never judged me. He's been there. He's been in my life. He's been in Elle's life. He checks in every now and then. Elle's only 14. He just turned 14 in June. So don't let his size fool you. You know what I'm saying? He wears a size 19 shoe, like it's ridiculous. But the point is, I wanted to, sure I could have said something, I could have wrote something up, but I want you to know that there's people out here that do appreciate y'all. You know what I mean? You know, everything. I appreciate y'all, that re recognize y'all, tattoos on my face and all. I appreciate you guys. And I'm thankful for you guys. And I just want you guys to know that. And I appreciate you guys. And I appreciate you guys. Councilwoman uh, Kendra Black, are you here today? Have her come on up. I don't have much to add to that story. It was pretty inspirational. But I'm Kendra Black, and I was a Denver City Council person for District 4, which is Southeast Denver, for eight years. And I worked with Mike and many of these other officers all those years very closely on community safety, but also on community. And Officer Bor or Technician Borquette, I don't really understand that, but he. <laughs> Mike. Mike. He is so compassionate that there's nothing to add to that story. That says it all. And that's what he does. Um, if you know him really well, you know that he cares about people 
and he wants to help them and solve their problems. And I really appreciate you so much and your friendship, and I miss you. I miss all of you. I want to thank um, the board of CAP, and I really want to, as you said, thank you, police officers, for everything you do to keep our community safe. Um, and thank you. It's my honor to congratulate Technician Borquez for his CAP award today. She asked me, which, what city council folks usually do that? I've been doing this now a long time, and I haven't had that. She asked me, hey, is there somebody in the community that you're sponsoring or that I can sponsor um, to help out with Christmas time? So me, I brought up Lemire, and I gave her the story, and right away she jumped in, and I, I believe Kendra Black uh, provided me with like about a $500 gift card. Okay, so that can't be understated. So. I greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much for doing that. Because to this date, I haven't had another city council person do that. So I appreciate it. I wasn't on the city council when that happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fair point. She was just retired. So I think that's why I think we were in a meeting or something. But uh, that's true. But still, thank you so much. Chief Thomas, would you like to come up? Well, those are certainly tough acts to follow. Um, you know, when I, when I got here, as if I was important or something, Christy asked me if I wanted to speak first or maybe speak last, and I thought, nobody came here to hear anything that I have to say. <laughs> they, they came here to hear the, the stories of the selfless acts of these officers. You know, it's not lost on me that today is 9-11, and you know, we, obviously we had a, a little moment of uh, silence for that. Um, but I think similar to all of those heroes, uh, everybody in this room, uh, everybody that was recognized today, came to work just like they did, um, not having any idea how they would impact the, the lives of the people um, that they would uh, connect with that day. And so um, as, as much as I revere those people that, that, uh, that died on 9-11, uh, I revere the people that are in this room because of the fact that, uh, that they did just that. They, they showed up to work um, hoping that they would make it home uh, later that day and uh, didn't know how they would impact the lives of people that they contacted, but, but I think had the heart um, to, to, to have that positive impact uh, regardless of who it was that they contacted. So I just want to say thank you to all of you. So thank you. And can I ask all of our award recipients to bring their awards and come on up front for us real quick? This is for the, the photo op that will happen. And if we corner you up here, there is nowhere you can go once we finish and conclude our ceremony today. And if you'll join me one more time in honoring all of our um, wonderful men and women and officers here. So the, the, the trick is going to be, as soon as we finish, we're going to run you outside really quick, take your picture in front of the pretty station, and then you guys can come back in here and talk to family and, and our commanders and our, our dignitaries. 
Um, we hope as we honor our award recipients today, we also indirectly honor all the numerous untold stories of our Denver police officers who serve our community above and beyond the call of duty daily. As we conclude the CAP board ceremony, we would like to extend our gratitude to all our dignitaries and guests in today's ceremony. We congratulate all of today's seven award recipients. We sincerely appreciate your above and beyond service to our community. In closing, we would also like to acknowledge all, all of our dedicated Denver police officers. As you go about your day, today duties, we want you to know we recognize this, the risks you face daily, the sacrifice you stand ready for, and the unwavering commitment to serve and protect all those who call Denver home. We want all the men and women who as a whole make up the Denver Police Department know, to know we see you, we appreciate you, and we need you. From our cap board to all of you, thank you for your service. This concludes today's session.